everybody. Welcome to Madden Science. Talking about momentum. Say go. Faster, faster, faster! Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Madden Science, everybody. Talking about momentum today. We can begin to think about momentum as inertia in motion. And like with any new topic, we have a few new things to cover, like some new variables and a new formula. That new formula is P equals M times V. So those ingredients for a cook and putting together a recipe for physics is that momentum P equals mass times velocity. The units that go along with this are kilograms, meters per second. Both mass and velocity are proportional to momentum. This can be seen with a few examples. Take, for instance, two cars, both with the same mass but differing velocities. If one of the cars has double the velocity of the other, then it will have twice the momentum. Or take, for instance, two cars of differing mass, a smaller car and a larger car or truck. If the two of them are going at the same velocity or same speed, but one has double the mass, the one with double the mass, double the inertia, has double the momentum. How about a momentum battle between a fancy sports car and a slow, sluggish, say like a garbage truck or something? If the sports car is going say 4V, so it's got four times velocity, but it's only got a mass of one, so 1M. That'd be one times four, or a total of 4P. The truck, however, has got a mass of four, so 4M, but it's going half of V. So four times half would be just 2P, ending up with the momentum half that of what the sports car had. Tennis illustrates impulse really well, where impulse equals force times time. Take a look at Roger Federer's swing right there, where the ball and the racket collide. Tennis players vary their tension in their string quite a bit, where less tension equals more power, and more tension generally means more control. The less tension there is, the greater time the ball and the racket are in contact. And the greater the time, multiplied by the same force, and you end up with more momentum and thus more velocity off the racket. Football is another sport that highlights the coolness of momentum and impulse, especially when it comes to its... Collisions! Sorry. Well, take a look. <laughs> I can't say sorry. Much like driving a car, if you had a choice between crashing into a hard wall or a big old soft haystack or some mattresses or feathers, you're going to take the collision that extends the time over which you stop so as to decrease the amount of force felt. The laws of physics and the law of conservation of momentum are hard at work in both football and car crashes. Think about the crumple zone seen here and helmet technology. They act much like crashing into a haystack. The haystack increases the amount of time for the crash, thus decreasing the force and making the collision safer for the football player and for the car passenger. Another example of this is with bungee jumping. You want a really stretchy elastic cord for more time, thus decreasing the force, versus in Vanuatu if you're diving and your bungee cord is some vines that don't stretch so well, well your time is going to be low and your force very high. Our experience of this concept came most directly with our egg drops, first from one meter. Ideally we wanted to build some kind of crash pad like this dude had. Only a few of our eggs made it to 1.5 meters and even fewer to the championship height of 2 meters. Next up is collisions, which we learned about in lab by making Newton's cradles 
and crashing marbles together, even in slow mo. And then it was out to the quad for some righteous croquet. Do you play croquet? Why, yes, Your Majesty. Then let the game begin! And then I was off to early ball, y'all. <laughs> here so this moves when you hit it because if you hit that and it was solid I mean it would hurt another good example of cushioning in this case springs increasing the time of collision and therefore decreasing the amount of force felt except when I kind of got those bruises from the seatbelt big thanks to our friends over at Whirly Ball and Edmonds Debbie Mike Tom let this come around and crash into things over and over and over. Today we're here at the Homish Sports Institute playing a little bit of bubble soccer. I wonder where we got that idea. We're getting ready to play a two-on-two -two bubble soccer. As you can see, we're all wearing giant bubbles. All right, clean game. Okay, so we had a little bit of fun learning about conservation of momentum through collisions. There's three basic ways that you could crash into an object, and here they are. Here's the first kind in our FET demonstration. Two objects, same mass, one moving and one not moving. Take a note of their momentum before and after, and the way that momentum is transferred. <laughs> and final will be equal. You can see it in a few different options where both balls keep moving or where all the momentum is imparted from the cue ball to the one ball. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some lab action of that kind of collision where we could measure before and after momentum. <laughs> Here are some examples of collision C where both objects are moving in the same direction. <laughs> Now the real fun happens in collision type B, where the two objects or the two silly humans run straight at each other for a head-on collision. <laughs> now this is how you feel momentum. Faster, faster, faster! 
Remember, it's P equals M times V. Mm-hmm.